Uh, you attempted earlier to um, explain some of the background to the letter that you sent the Attorney General dated the 12th of, no of November. Unfortunately, you, were, you weren't able to complete that, but I would like to take you to that matter. In your submission, you attached a letter dated the 12th of November 2015, which you sent to the Attorney General, in which you raised a number of concerns about the processes for obtaining your legal advice. Now, there are some, participate, some participants in the debate over this matter that have, who have claimed that you sought that meeting because of concerns about your workload. Is that correct? No. What exactly were the concerns that you wished to discuss with the Attorney General? There were essentially three concerns, and I can identify these as I have to date without going into legal privilege. My concern in relation to the Citizenship Bill was that I had provided a lengthy advice in respect to that proposal in 2014, and apparently within the Department of Immigration in the first half of 2015, a substantial change was made to that proposal. No one had come back to me for advice, and it was only by accident I learnt that the proposal had been radically changed. The issue I was raising was that if I'd been asked to advise on legislation, proposed legislation, which is then amended, uh, there ought to be further Solicitor General advice on the relevant version of legislation so that no one can be uh, uh, misled as to exactly who is advising on the document. My concerns with citizenship were that I was brought into the process, taken out of the process, and then brought back into it in unsatisfactory circumstances that I won't detail further at the moment. My concern in relation to marriage equality was that during the second half of last year, when that matter was being considered within government, no one came to me. And my concern was very much that had that matter proceeded through to legislation, had it been under challenge in the High Court, it would be important that the primary government lawyer, who was expected to defend the legislation in due course in the High Court, had had an adequate opportunity to advise on it during the process. The, the third matter I raised, I, I won't deal with further at the moment because I think it was quite a, a one-off situation, but the meeting that I came to on the 30th of November was very much a meeting to say, uh, here are very important matters where the Solicitor General either is not being brought into the process or is being brought into it uh, in an unsatisfactory fashion, and how can we do better with that issue. Thank you. 